Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to delve into the concept of pride within the One Piece world. As one of the most neglected of the traditional Seven Deadly Sins, pride can be an incredibly dangerous trait that can essentially result in a downfall brought on by an individual's own doing, when it goes a step too far and turns into arrogance. And that step too far is what we are going to focus on. The criteria for this list is as follows. A character must display some level of excessive pride, also known as arrogance, within themselves or their plans, which has led directly to a negative result. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the top five most arrogant characters in One Piece. Number five, NL. As a man who referred to himself as, and more than likely believed that he was, a god, NL certainly fits the criteria of being a proud character to say the least. I mean, he even displays that super tropey trait of an annoying genius eating an apple. I don't know why it is, but there's something about eating an apple that's just so damn arrogant. But anyway, the main cause for NL's pride was actually pretty well founded. His devil fruit is the only fruit in the entire series that has been referred to as being in the invincible class, and made him immune to most sources of damage, as well as increased his destructive capabilities to the point where he can destroy entire islands with ease. Oh, and he also possesses one of the most OP senses of observation haki we've seen in the entire series. But with all of this power, Enel quite understandably became incredibly slack and over-reliant on his natural abilities. So when the unthinkable happened and a rubber man arrived in the sky, Enel was pretty much finished on the spot. For all of his power, he simply could not stop one very determined rubber boy. Number four. Galdino. More commonly known as Mr. Three, Galdino is, or at least was, an exceptionally proud man, having earned one of the top spots within the Baroque Works organization through sheer intellect. So Galdino certainly was an intelligent man. However, he also believed that he was an artist, and that is the first sign of danger because art is not a logical process. And an application of excessive intelligence to the practice of art can result in a very convoluted outcome. And that very scenario happened to Galdino when his overly complicated plan to create living sculptures on a giant birthday cake candelabra was thwarted. With relative ease, I might add. The issue here is that Galdino was so convinced of his own superior intelligence that he put far too much stock in his own unnecessarily complicated ideas. Building a plan with a false foundation that toppled and began a string of events that saw him being sent to the underwater prison impel down. I feel like that's a pretty high price to pay for being just that little bit too proud of oneself, but it must be said that during and after his experiences in impel down, Galdino became a much more humble person and is now presumably able to apply his intellect in much more practical ways. Number three. Moving on, we actually have Galdino's former boss, a Crocodile. In terms of intelligence, Crocodile is several steps up from Galdino in every way, and doesn't have the pesky sense of artistry to hold him back. Crocodile is one of those people who comes up with backup plans for his backup plans, and has a tendency to work out his victory down to the very last detail. However, all it takes is one moment of arrogance to send all of that toppling down. As far as I can tell, Crocodile made one mistake during the entirety of his alabaster infiltration and assault. That mistake was not killing Monkey D. Luffy when he had the chance. And I should point out that he made that mistake twice. Instead of finishing the job, Crocodile arrogantly assumed that his power had overwhelmed Luffy, and in two instances, he simply walked away. To which Luffy recovered and struck back on both occasions. And I really must stress just how huge a mistake this was. Because it didn't matter that Princess Vivi had discovered his plans, it didn't matter that the other Straw Hats had managed to defeat the entirety of his organization, the only thing that prevented Crocodile being victorious was that final showdown with Luffy. One mistake made out of pure vanity he cost Crocodile everything he had been working for. But hey, at least he was able to earn a spot on this list. Number two, Doflamingo. Don Quixote Doflamingo was raised as a celestial dragon, so it's no wonder that he grew up believing that he was naturally superior to every other being in the world. This was further cultivated by growing up as the head of a crime family, and by the time Doflamingo was an adult, his arrogance and sheer belief in himself was at an overwhelming level. For the most part, Doflamingo doesn't even consider his defeat a possibility. As a result, he engages in exceptionally risky behavior, which during the Dressrosa arc culminated in his defeat. One prime example of this is the fact 
fact that he put the actual Mara Mara no Mi in a chest for the Colosseum prize, believing there was no way that his officer could be beaten. And just where do, where do I begin with this? I mean, if there's no way that Diamante was going to be beaten, then why bother even putting the fruit in there and risking, say, the number two officer of the Revolutionary Army stealing it and using it to contribute directly to your downfall? And Doflamingo was full of that sort of thinking, right up until the final blow, actually. He waited far too long to take the threat on Dressrosa seriously and paid a huge price as a result of his arrogance. Number one, Arlong. Now Arlong is a unique case on this list because his pride wasn't so much in himself, but in the entire Fishman race. Arlong was a proud racist, believing that Fishman had an advantage over humans in every conceivable area. Now this core belief would eventually send his entire empire toppling down, all due to a mere handful of humans. But Arlong's arrogance goes a bit further than that. Firstly, Arlong believed that he knew perfectly how to manipulate humans, generally involving money, either paying money such as to Captain Nezumi, or making a bargain for money such as his deal with Nami. In the in the latter case, Arlong broke his bargain with Nami and was entirely convinced that there would be no repercussions because one, he's an invincible fisherman, and two, because he thought he had complete psychological control of Nami. And neither case turned out to be true. Arlong's pride was entirely unfounded and he was beaten by a 17 year old human boy wearing sandals and a straw hat. If Arlong had been even minutely less arrogant and allowed Nami to buy back Kokogashi Village, he would still more than likely be the ultimate terror of East Blue. Instead, he has now lost everything but he has gained the number one spot on this list. And that pretty much does it for the top five most arrogant characters in One Piece. If you enjoyed this video, then feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe, and please do comment with your own, let's say, overly proud characters. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.